What is up YouTube and welcome to this Nobody Sleeps in the Woods tonight ending explained and spoiler review video. So spoopy season is in full swing and I've got a pumpkin outside of my house so I know that it's Halloween very very soon and we continue with another creepy ass movie this time from Poland that has just dropped on Netflix. This movie follows youngsters as they head to a camp designed to get kids to stop being addicted to social media, computers, and really just tech in general, as all of their phones are being confiscated. Now, from the trailer, I did expect this movie to be a sort of Camp Crystal Lake style slasher as they're all set in a summer camp with one-on-one -on -one they're being picked off. It wasn't, which was a bit of a disappointment, but overall the movie was an enjoyable and servable slasher, even if it was very, very cringe at times. Now, there will be spoilers in this video, so please do be warned. And if you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like down below and subscribe with notifications on so you never miss a video from us. Now we open with a postman delivering some letters to a remote house in the woods, and of course the woods from the title. He knocks on the door to no answer whatsoever, and tries to get into the house via a basement, only to hear some very, very creepy noises, but we know this is where the twin monsters were kept by their mother, being fed all sorts of farm animals. However, they later escape while they're being fed by their mother, and she falls into the basement. They are free to rain terror upon the local area. While this is going on, the teenagers and young adults arrive at the camp and have their social media communication devices taken so they can detox their addiction to technology and social media away. A very hot topic. And even I recently got rid of my Facebook and set limits on using Instagram after seeing the social dilemma on Netflix. Now the film is weird in the way that it introduces some strange things for almost no reason. For example, the girl who survives is the only one to have flashbacks to her life and has self-harm scars, but it's not really explored really anything at all. It's, it's just weird. We also had a priest who came to bless the camp who arrived in a fancy car and nice shoes, but I expected him to be connected to the monsters in some sort of hereditary sort of religious horror way but that doesn't really happen he just turns out to capture one of the kids who turns out to be gay and the priest says that he would lure people into traps and that's why he's kidnapped him yeah it's uh, very very weird now after a night at the camp the group then go into the woods for a three-day hike as they all look to Julek as they're asked to keep up and ask who is the slowest one as he's clearly the most unfit. They head off as he asks Julie about her necklace and they have an incredibly awkward discussion about T-800s and Terminator and how she looks like Sarah Connor. He just generally acts like a total simp. Anila is also asked if she works out by Daniel as Daniel and Bartek then have a sort of heated exchange which seems out of nowhere especially as I thought it'd be two guys fighting for the affection of the hot girl so to speak but Bartek is gay and I guess he kind of fancied Daniel I'm not too sure how that happens but Bartek is pushed as they stop to patch him up Julek stumbles across a dead deer who has been mutilated while urinating and the guide teacher comes out to investigate but says it's really nothing at all and it's, it's, it's interesting there as well as we finally at the camp learn about some of the characters uh, at least Julek as he reveals he was the second best games player in Poland with almost a million subs on uh, YouTube but he doesn't say which game and his parents cut him off meaning he couldn't go to Korea to play in the championships. Daniel is also put in his place when he asks how many subs he has and gets absolutely dunked on. It would have been nice to learn more about each person in the group, except we, Daniel, we never really learned much about them. He had a girlfriend, he was a virgin. It's just, yeah, it's just seemed predictable and even more predictable as the hot guy and girl hook up after taking drugs. Have they not seen Scream? I mean, they're breaking the horror movie rules here and they bone in a very graphic manner, which I didn't expect at all. He's taken by one of the monster twins and then we see a flashback of Zosha's life and it turns out that she had a very traumatic experience in a car crash, seeing her family burn alive, which explains how 
secretive she is and she has some self-harm probably trying to recover from what happened there in her earlier life now they wake up to find daniel missing and find a condom and a joint there and a man i hope that bus was worth it my g as they go to try and find him with bartek and Annelia being kept behind. I do apologize if I absolutely butcher some of these names. It's just, these are names I've never actually heard of before in my life. Now they find some blood on a tree and that's the same blood and hand that Zosius saw earlier in the movie. And sad for, for them, they find the house that the twins live in. Annelia and Bartek are left at the camp and the two nerds and the teacher poke around the house only to find dismembered bodies in the basement as the monster arrives home. I think the shots of the monsters and how it's shown is so very, very cool as it's become clear now that there are two of them as they wear different clothes and they are the twins in the house. The kids go to escape and the teacher stays to try and kill the monster, which is really dumb as she could have actually escaped with the kids as well as the monster couldn't clearly go through that window and, well, she inevitably dies. We cut to Bartek because he says how his father didn't like him being gay and his father's delusional about him being gay and thinks it's just a phase or the his boyfriends that he brings around are just friends. However, he turns around to see the other girl kills it's just so weird that it just happens instantly did he would he have not heard that at all it's just absolutely shocking sometimes in this movie it just seems very low low rent although overall i did enjoy it the other two are now in the woods scared as julek says it's game over man game over but he's told to calm down they find a house with a man in there who knows what happens. He says he knows of the boys and he lost his leg to them. It turns out that the monsters were normal twin boys until a meteor landed and something came out of it to possess them and change them. It all very much looks like a very budget version of Venom and I thought the effects here looked really, really good. Eventually, they started to eat their dog and their mother locked them in the basement absolutely horrified and fed them until they escaped. It's unclear how many times they escaped or if she would let them out to feed. It's a bit, it's not really explored there that much. But I did like how it reminded me of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. And that's one of my favorite horror movies and please don't hate me for enjoying that movie. Meanwhile, Bartek arrives to find a church with the priest from earlier in a bizarre subplot. He's knocked out and gagged. But I think this is a reference to him saying that it's horrible being gay in Poland, as the priest himself seemed anti-LGBT. But the priest is murdered outside as his eyes are absolutely pressed in, and it's a really gruesome scene. And I have to say, the horror violence is absolutely on point here. But Bartek is able to escape as the other two also leave the guy's house and go to get the phone off of Daniel's body as it's their only hope. But Julek then distracts the monster as Zosia goes to get the phone, but it goes incredibly badly as he has his tongue ripped out by the monster and is later stabbed. It is, oh, it, it did set me on edge there. But the phone has no battery and they're both captured and tied up. Julek is dying and begs to be killed, which is obliged, and she manages to get out of the basement, which seems so very convenient, and stabs one of them on the bed and runs away. She doesn't manage to kill the other one. I thought that was really, again, quite convenient. The writing is a bit iffy towards the end of this movie. However, we see Bartek arrive, the old man from earlier, that shoots him actually mistake. He... he was on guard waiting for the monsters and I found this bit to be a complete waste of time as he seemed like one of the most interesting characters but was just completely wasted. Now we cut again to a very weird and bizarre scene of a police officer saying how he has no budget and he's tough being a police officer as it turns out he's talking to a hooker and she takes his money and leaves only for our survivor to arrive and try and get some help but the surviving monster comes and rips him in two and wow did that look absolutely good and gruesome at the same time but earlier just just before this he was warned that there are two people who need to be detained as they're drunk and dressing in world war ii uniforms as 
The survivor drives off and runs over the monster, thinking he's dead. Except these jolly World War II guys turn up, and, well, the monster wakes up, ready to kill once more, opening it up for a sequel. Now, I thought it was an okay film and felt so very 2003, with reminiscence of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remakes and amped up slashes of the early 2000s that the 90s would never have gotten away with. Now, it could have done with us actually wanting to care about the characters a bit more, and the weird subplots and superfluous scenes being removed, and maybe focused more around the actual cabin and the 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 summer camp there but it was very average but i enjoyed it despite this and it did have flashes of genius at times but that's it for this video please drop a like down below please do subscribe with notifications on and i'll see you soon and goodbye